everyone, this is Kelly, and I wanted to sort of a wrap up, even though obviously um, we have a little bit more time left in 2022, but I want to do a wrap up of my planner as well as a, you know, the stuff that I have getting together to set up my 2023 planner. So um, I spent m almost all of the year in a Hobonichi Cousin. Um, this uh, case that I'm using is a Moterm. Now I have started the year off in this color that I believe is Pebble, which I absolutely do love. I use this all the way till I think September, September, maybe it was the beginning of October when my uh, friend um, Deirdre had given me this one for my birthday. And so um, this is the burnt orange, which I also love. I also have, it's not, my thing is not in it right now. For a little bit, I played with half letters um, and I got a disc bound Mo term, which I'm really happy to have. Uh, I'm actually gonna put all my D&D stuff in here, uh, most likely, or it's also this when I take it out. Though when I'm at home, I mostly just have it like this. So I did do a half letter for a month or two, maybe, no, about maybe a month and a half. And I there's stuff that I really loved about using the disc bound, being able to move it in and out. But the stuff that I ended up finding myself moving in and out wasn't really as much calendar related as sort of reference material related, like these sort of reference materials. And what I missed um, is that because of the good paper that I use in here, I can only put like four months, I, I think four months. And I really loved having all of my weeks be able to flip through in one. And so I just have decided to um, stay with a cousin for next year. And I use this, I put this, I put quick references because these I pull in and out all the time. I have projects uh, for project tracking, which I really love. And so I put, um, I'm having that in here. And then this is for other tracking. Um, I think next year I'm gonna use this for uh, reading tracking and workings and things like that. That's I think what I'm gonna do with that. Um, I have it 100% settled. And then I have my For Love of Divination all in here that I can pull in and out when I just wanna grab a page and not the whole book. But most of the time I just leave it in here because it's a disc bound, I can just, you know, flip it around and it's great, right? So I can, like very often I'm pulling the grand tableau up and I can literally just pull that, set it to the side and have it. So I'm really happy with um, this disc bound notebook and the setup of it. And if I was going to take it places, I could put it into here. Again, I use disc bind for a lot of different things. So I probably probably will use this cover to kind of pull again all of my D&D &D things together. I'm both a DM, but I also am I also have a character that I have sections on, on in Discbind. Plus I'm working on a really cool project kind of related to D&D. &D. So I'm thinking of putting together another kind of notebook like this but all for D&D stuff. And then that would stay in here because I would be taking this here, there and everywhere. So um, that's, that. I just wanted to touch on that. But this, uh, I don't know what the name of this green is, to be honest. I'll have to look it up, but I do love this green. So these are the co color, and I'm a huge Moterm fan, like, uh, fan. I uh, definitely want to get more colors in this. Um, maybe to have a color per season. I don't know, but I do love the Moterm covers. No, I am not sponsored. Yes, I wish I was, but I am not. But um, but I've stayed in a Moterm all, uh, all year long, and I'm just a big, big fan. So that is, that one's a little bit thick to stay in there. Um, that's that. So in terms of use-wise, um, I, I need to be careful because I don't want to put anything out there. The, the first, this first section that is the, you know, six months on a page, I tried different things. I erased them, tried them again, um, and really didn't find anything that I, stuck. However, when I started, did my four weeks in, 
um, in the letter bound, I did use sort of a internal was sort of my main regular and then I had a space for work things and other like work tasks and, and tracking things for work that I did end up really enjoying and so I'm going to try to do a, do similar to this um, but each month and but have it really focused on work and that's what I'm going to try to do for next year so because I, I didn't really use this connect uh, consistently and I had stuff in here, erased it. I'm glad I did it in pencil just to see what I wanted to do. But I just never got into a rhythm with that. But I think I've got a pretty good plan for that. Then we have our monthlies, which are, I go in at the beginning of the year, which I'll show in a minute, put all the astrological, birth dates, lament days, all of that kind of stuff I do at the beginning of the year. And this is much more future planning, right? If I'm going to be going somewhere. I didn't end up liking having all of my bills and, and all of like readings. Um, I tried doing like whenever a reading came in, putting it here, but I do that in other places and I really didn't need it here. So um, I'm going to really try to keep, uh, again, work stuff in these pages um, and keep this um, birth dates, um, lament days, astrological things, um, and then just, you know, future planning appointments and stuff like that. Um, that's my plan for this. Cause I, again, uh, I think this is where I put year, I do put like my, what my classes are, cause that means something for scheduling, but I didn't really like when I had, um, all of like reading stuff in there. I didn't find that to be useful. I do most of that kind of stuff on Notion. So there's an app called Notion or a, a software Notion. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and um, I put that kind of stuff. I have a calendar. So all that kind of stuff goes there. And I don't really need it to hear because it goes into the weekly. Um, I also didn't like having all my reoccurring bills here. It didn't really work for me. Um, but... Um, but I, because again, I have a space, a checklist in Notion that I do. So I didn't find that to be no, useful. I kind of fell off of the decorating. Um, I don't find that I really need the decorating here. My, I'm really enjoy the decorating here. And then sometimes in the dailies. So I don't know that I'll go into the monthly decorating or maybe par it down where it's just a banner on the side. Maybe I'll try that for this November and December spots just to see how I feel about that because I just didn't really feel like I needed all that other stuff. No, I actually don't want to because I want to have a monthly inbox right here where I have a monthly list um, um, that I will pull then from in my weekly uh, to-do list. So I really, I'm probably not going to do much decorating in the monthlies for 2023. The weeklies are, you know, have always been my place where I land. Um, this is where I do most of my work. Um, and it's just where I, um, I'm utilizing this all the time. And so I have loved, I've never decorated a planner. I mean, I put stickers in here and there, but I've never like decorated a planner and used lots of stickers, but I love, I love flipping through this. I love looking at them. Some I love, some I don't love, but this has been really a great for time management and things of that nature, but also uh, I've just really enjoyed it. So I do plan on continuing to, to decorate the weeklies. This is this week's, which I thought turned out really fantastic. Um, so I'm not really going to change anything. Like I like how I have it set up. Um, I was doing for most of the year, my weather tracking at the top. Um, I have started to, um, because when I was doing my half letters, I really loved my insert where I had the sort of week at a glance. I need to go in and do yesterday's and today's. But I think I'm going to start the year off this way where I am putting up here birthdays, astrological bills, things like that up here. And then um, on the Monday, having the weekly stuff here, I also track some dreams and stuff like that. And um, just putting a tab there so that I can quickly get to it even as I go through the rest of the week. So that's, I think, where I'm going to 
uh, land with my weather tracking because I really like um, this format. Um, so that's uh, where I'm at least going to start 2023 um, and see how that that goes. So all of my things down here where I have sort of checklists because I don't use you know, I don't time manage when it starts to get late. It's generally me watching television or gaming or something like that. So I don't really need, I have enjoyed my marbles. Um, and, you know, some this one I've played around with just depending on what I need during that week. But the work, the home, the errands, waiting for D&D &D because I, I both play and DM. That's important. I have stuff I've got to keep track of. And then uh, I do, the, right now I have sort of videos that I need to do, which I, I'm enjoying. But this one kind of changes as per needed. And then the marbles is just one random thing that, that was good about that day. So collecting your marbles, so to speak. So I'm really happy with this layout and I'll be going into 2023 with the same layout. Um, I had one of the reasons that I tried a um, half letter is because of the dailies. You know, this year was actually quite stressful. Stressful. Um, I had COVID twice, but the one, well, both of them were really ratchet. But the first one was really horrible. I had vertigo for an extended amount of time. I, um, I had some uh, personal things uh, occur that across several months. So it just. It was definitely a rough month in terms of like just personal stuff. And that reflected in my dailies. I really enjoyed the dailies, um, how I was using them in different ways, a little bit of artwork, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't, there was no holds barred. If I used it, I um, art, I used, or decorative, I used it. If I didn't, I didn't. My beautiful daughter uh, and her wedding dress. Um, so I really enjoyed the dailies. Um, and then uh, when life went crazy uh, for me or got out, I just had big chunks of where I didn't use them at all. And for some reason, just because of the way the year was, it really started to agitate me. And it shouldn't have because the empty days are say as much, right? You either didn't need, um, you didn't need to checklist, you didn't need to journal, you didn't need to X, Y, Z, or there was just stuff going on. And that's a reflective of that, that things were a little difficult and you just didn't utilize it. So for whatever reason, that was agitating me. And I talked to my friend Patrick. He's like, I'm surprised I agitate you because I'm really am about that idea that what isn't there is as important as what is there, right? It all tells a story. So I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to go into it the same way. Um, and mostly, uh, most often it's some form of checklist for me. So I can sit down for the day and this is my to-do list for work. It's my, in this case, you know, I had video that I ended up transferring over to a bigger list. Um, a room class I was prepping for so I could checklist off things, topics, things like that. So it's just running checklist for the day. That is most often what I use it for. But I really did enjoy the more, um, a little bit more of like dream tracking. And, um, you know, when I was gone, I did pictures and things and a little more journalist aspect journal aspect of it as well. So I'm, I'm going to you know embrace that. And when there's empty days, there's empty days and kind of just continue to go forward and not allow that to be something that bothers me. So that's kind of what worked, what didn't work um, for me and what kind of my plans are moving forward. Um, I'm going to use this video just to go over the things like, again, I talked about the Moterm. I talked about the Hobonichi Cousin is the um, this is just a uh, printed out month uh, for this uh, month for all of my wheel and year head readings that I need to work through. So that's what that is. Um, but I did want to talk about, you know, uh, things, things, uh, items that I have loved. Uh, I'm just, I'm not going to pull all of these out. I'll just pull my favorites out. Um, uh, and these things are all sitting here and if, when, if I'm going out of town, uh, they're going into a pencil case, which I actually will pull that out because I have loved that pencil case. Uh, that and that is 100% on there. Um, and we'll put, put this over here for a second. Okay, uh, and these. So pens and pencil wise, I started out the year 
with several forms of the um, Sarasas, the Nanos and the Grands. I've ended up really loving the Grands. They're 0.5, it's a much thicker than I normally use. Um, but they they just write so smoothly. The colors, it's a vintage set, so the colors are just really gorgeous and vintagey. And I just love these. I still, even though I've kind of used these in my main uh, weekly, I've still really love these. I grab them for the dailies. I grab them when I'm writing on on post-it pads. I really love the Sarasa Grands. And this is in, these are the Sarasa Grands vintage, so they're in a metal body. You can get these in a plastic body and you can get them in Nano in the 0.4, which I have in love, but they're almost too thin for me. And I just have loved the richness of the color of the Grands. So these are out all the time uh, in my pencil box because I am grabbing them. I can grab that too because I'm grabbing them all of the time. So that's, um, those were my favorite colors though, are the Bordeaux purple and, or it's just Bordeaux and then the camel. I love these two colors so much and I probably need to get refills for them, but I use these probably the most. I do also love the green. So maybe those three are my favorite. I use this, my D and D character all the time, but these are probably my three favorite and three most used, but I love the Sarasa Grands. The last couple months, I uh, somebody that I watch, um, Monster Coffee and Co and Company, she uses the, or she has used the Klena, um, Energel Klenas. And so I got one to try it out and this is in a 0.4 in black. Lo fell in love with this pen and I have used this since then. I really love, I'm a gel ink person and it's a bit more like a needle nose and I just really love the way this writes. So in the weekly, I've been using this. I got the, this says 0.3. I didn't actually like the 0.3 and um, then I think I also have the 0.5 and I didn't love the 0.5, but in ordering refills, I could get a 0.4 in the brown. So this is a body says 0.3, but the refill in it is a 0.4. So I have 0.4 in the black and the brown, and then there is a red and I have that in the 0.4 as well. And I I just really love these energy Clenas. I wish they came in more colors, although these are the main colors that I, mostly in the weekly I'm doing either black or brown depending on the sticker set that I'm using. And I've really gravitated to doing it mostly in black. Um, so that's that, the red I use for like astrology dates and things like that. Love those. So the pen wise, I'll just grab one of these back. The um, Klenas and the Sarasa Grands have been my favorites. Now for writing details, um, I have loved this Tombow Mono drawing pen in 0.1. This is for like if I write my quote on the side and I need it really fine, um, this has been fantastic. So I have used this a lot this year. So I have to put that one out there. My trusty pencil that I love that I can't tell you what it is because I can't read it. Is that upside down? I'm putting it up here. Kuru, Kuru Togo, Uni Kuru Togo um, uh, pencil. I've had this forever and I absolutely love it. I need to find my erasers to refill that, but I use that. You need a pencil that this is my favorite ever i try i couldn't find this for a while because i lost mine and so i couldn't find this one was out of stock at michael's so i got this one i don't love it but this westcott six inch ruler that i get at michael's i adore this it's just perfect size for a calendar or for a planner and i love it i adore this um tombow mono sand and rubber eraser um, there is sand on one end, grittier, and then a regular rubber on the other end. This is great. You can, if you smudge or, you know, get a little bit of, you know, sometimes I'll just like accidentally get a line somewhere just from pulling my pencil too raggedly. With this sand end, I can, and even with the Tomo River paper, if I smudge or something, you can just lightly sand it off. 
you know, you're watching so you don't put a hole and you can get rid of some smudging and just like a weird extra line that was put there so but i just even the regular eraser i really love this eraser big fan of that eraser so that's a tombow mono that the other thing Tombow Mono is this, which I adore. This is a Tombow Mono correction tape. I have tried um, like the other things I've had in the past, but this is my favorite on the Hobonichi um, Tomo River paper. And I just like the size of it. it's perfect with the gridding. This is just perfect for me and I absolutely adore it. Um, if you are a sticker person, get the a one of these. Um, you can get them at craft stores, Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, that type of thing. Um, I, the one with the bent end and the very needle nose is perfect. It's great for, you know, taking, you know, I'll pull a sticker up, um, and to go to place it. Well, it's even great for getting, especially the printable stickers that you kind of got to play with a little bit, but getting the sticker up, oops, I had it up and then I... We'll find it randomly because, you know, I'm trying to show something, so it's not going to gonna be cooperative. Sorry, this is an old... I have not found exactly how I like my stickers cut, but um, it just lets me be able to place it really where I want to place it very easily. Um, I, it's one of those simple things, like, yeah, of course, um, that but that is super necessary and I just think everybody should have one if you're doing stickers at all. So love that. I haven't actually found, I'm a huge post-it person. I haven't found, uh, I haven't been happy with post my post-its, um, but having flags, you know, I, these are from, I don't even know it. I think those are from um, Stology. I have some thin ones. I don't like how these come up. Um, it's really hard just to get one, but I like the tiny ones and the bigger ones. And these, I just use them constantly to quickly bookmark something. So having some kind of, if you can, and I don't like the colors, I need to get, I, I've seen some pretty colored ones, like, you know, earth tone ones or whatever on sets on Amazon. So I need to, sorry, my uh, thing is frozen. Um, I need to... Um, kind of check that out because that's not something I'm like 100% thrilled with. But having some sort of flags are uh, useful and important. So I, they, they get an honorable mention. Um, I've also in the last couple months been using the mild liners. I've always liked mild liners. What I've found about mild liners is that they're often actually too dark and too bold. Uh, for me, I am a huge fan of Tombows. I just hadn't, you know, I kind of maybe just got tired um, of, of the color choices. I uh, color code my, my time slots. So if I'm doing work, I generally put brown in and then you know put an arrow for how long I was doing the work. If it was a personal thing like cleaning or running errands, it's green. That's just, I've done that all year and I've really liked the color coding. Um, this is mostly the green that I was using. And I think I might have gotten gone out of the brown that I like. And that's why I ended up switching to the mild liners. But anyways, um, right now I've really enjoyed these two. Um, I don't think it says the color on it. If it does, I can't read it. This, uh, yeah, I can't read it. Anyways, um, the, the thing that I prefer about the brushes, let me just grab a random page here. I like the brushes with to, to make a line or to fill in the line better of the Tombows because it just kind of is a nice, when you use the side of the brush, it fits that perfectly. What the Tombows, or the, I'm sorry, the mild liners are the same, but because it's a chisels tip, if you don't lay it on there correctly, um, it does, um, it does fit perfectly, but it, I can sometimes get a skinny line because I haven't laid the thing on there correctly, but both of them work really well with the Hobonichi paper. So I'm, I'm generally a giant fan of Tombow's, but I have been really enjoying and using these two mild liners. And again, this is mostly for time management, uh, throughout my week. So, for example, if we look at this week, 
um, you know, if it's if it's got a brown label, I can look back over that and say that's work. Or if it's green, I can look over that and see see that that's work. So, but I mean, these Tombos and the mild liners have to have uh, a mention there. So the other thing that needs a mention for items I used for sure is my Canon Ivy. There's a new one out. Um, I want to do more of this because I really didn't, until I went camping one, uh, like here I've got um, Isabel is shining in the light. Uh, when I went camping, I did like a picture of a day and just took that Ivy with me. Um, I really want to utilize that more. I was mostly using it uh, in the back like for readings, um, but I ended up doing a lot of times um, readings on... Um, like here's a, a little reading. I had a bunch of these circle ones, which I'm not a fan of, but I wanted to use them up. Um, mostly for readings, but I really like them even in the weekly spread. So what it is is a printer that you can t take your images that are on your phone and print um, onto paper that has the ink on it. So the, the paper itself contain almost like the old Polaroids, right? So you can take a picture from your phone and just send it over here through Bluetooth and print out onto this paper, the sticker paper. There's a new one out. Um, I'm trying very hard to resist because I, I don't want to spend that much money. Again, this does work. I've been having, I've had this for a long time um, but, and I have had some issues with it, but the, I think the new version is supposed to print much better um, because it does tend to be dark. Sometimes you really have to kind of get the light just right, but I've used it for years and loved it, but I am definitely tempted by the new version of it. But regardless, this is really fantastic and it's something that it can fit, you know, right in um, and I took it with me and it, it's fantastic. So I definitely use this for both my sort of working tracker books and journals, but also in my planner. Um, and then this I didn't mention. So this is Angu, A-N-G-O-O. -O. I bought this on Amazon, but what I love about this, I'm not gonna do it, but you can zipper the bottom part closed so that it is much more compact if you're just going out for the day or something like that. But when you open it up, and here I have some more mild liners. When uh, you open it up, um, it gets quite a depth here and so for example these are things if I'm gonna gonna go out of town all of these things that I say are my favorite pair of good pair of little scissors always helpful for cutting things stickers and things um, you know I might put the the extra colors down here right now I'm using these so I'm just gonna do that um, I don't generally take all of the pens out, you know, my main pen will be on in my planner loop itself. Um, I do tend, if I'm going to be going where I'm going to be planning, I do tend to take this one with me. I'm going to take my whatever main two highlighters that I'm using. I always take a pencil, right? And now because I do do some stuff with astrology, I might go ahead and take my red or whatever, you know, if I was using a Sarasa or something like that. Um, so those that go in there and then I can put this in here. I can put some stickers in there if I need. I can put some, definitely put a pack of post-its in there. And I always have this next to me. I've got one over there, throw that in there. Put some of the, you can fill this up with stickers, but if I'm gonna camp or something, I'm gonna put more of these in there. And it really does hold a, everything that I need it to hold um, for my planning and things of that, other than the stickers which go into my planner. So I'm really happy with this. It's held up really nicely. It holds everything I need it to hold. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. So those things are important, right? Obviously for me, stickers ha and washi tape have been must haves, right? I'm not gonna pull out all of my washi tape, but I have uh, two of these containers and I used washi tape before I was a using them in planner. So I use this for paper crafting and stuff. So I already had quite a collection. I will say it has grown. But um, this is a washi tape container. I think I got a Hobby Lobby and I probably need to go through and give it a clean up refresh. I had medium tones and light tones um, is how it was, but I know it's gotten a little mishmash, but I'm a fan of washi tape. I get my washi tape at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, 
Amazon. Um, there's some amazing Etsy shops. I haven't really gotten into buying too much from individual places yet, but um, I use those in my weeklies. So obviously washi tape was used. And then stickers. Um, I use a combination of sticker books because I had some of these. Uh, so um, this is Park Lane from Joann's. I do like their um, stickers. I also, here's a happy planner, although most of the time you want to get it to say um, mini on it. Does it say a mini? Works better with the Hobonichi Cousins. I got this one on clearance and it is Disney Princesses because I play a lot of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Um, this is a regular, just fall harvest. I can still use a lot of this. I love this one and just kind of cut things down as I need to. So that something like that. And this is just like blacks and golds, which I've, I've enjoyed using and have plenty to use. I have lots of sticker books because I love stickers and I already had a lot and I still have a lot. So stickers, 100%. But I also have done a lot with the Hobonichi Cousin of printing out these are not, these are purchased uh, Coffee Mo Monster and Co. Um, you can go on Etsy and type in printable stickers. I use the Mako stick transparent sticker paper from Amazon and I have a love-hate relationship with my silhouette portrait cutter outer. I love it when it works. I want to throw it across the room when it won't just do what it's supposed to do, but that's kind of printers in general. Um, I, some of the places that are Etsy shops, Blush and Indigo, Fiona Jardine Designs, um, I love to print all together, Starstruck Designs, Print Petticoat Bandit, Planning Choco, and Sincerely D Designs are some Etsy shops that I've gotten a lot of stickers from. Um, you know, now I know what I like a little bit more, so I have a lot of things in here I don't reach for as much anymore, but, um, I'm sure I'll come back to them, uh, in the next year. And then I have, you know, more decorative things down here. So again, I'm a sticker fan before I started decorating planners, but it's definitely been part of my planner experience. So, um, I have, I've enjoyed that artistic, um, Oops, this is supposed to go into, I gotta have glasses cleaner, um, goes in here as well. And really I would put the charging cable um, for that in here as well so that I can hook it up and charge it. So yeah, I think, I think that's everything in terms of what I use, what I enjoyed, um, how I feel. This is my first year using the Hobonichi Cousin and uh, I've definitely enjoyed it. Um, and again, uh, I've landed on uh, doing that again next year. So I'm gonna just quickly show you what I've pulled together to get prepped for 2023. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up here uh, uh, for everybody. Okay, let me go grab that stuff. Okay, so this is my uh, Hobonichi uh, 2023 cousin in English. I was going to the half letters, or I wanted to try them out, and I gave them a good try, um, but my friend Patrick couldn't stand me, the idea of me not having a Hobonichi, and so sent me an English, she said, no, you don't have to use it, but um, sent me the 2023 English, and that was, I was already considering going back to it, so that kind of pushed it over the edge. This is actually his very first case that he doesn't use anymore um, that he sent me, and it's really firm. Uh, I'm not using this, this will go into a Moterm, but what I do like about this is right now while I'm setting it up, it's very firm, so I can set it on the arm of my chair and start working on my setup. So that's where I've been keeping it uh, until it will shift into my Moterm on the week I start using mine, the week of the winter solstice, because that's my beginning of the year. So um, I am really do, I wasn't, my intention when I was gonna buy a Hobonichi for 2023, my intention was actually to get the Japanese. Um, but I will say 
that I quite like how I don't love this like I truthfully just wish this wasn't here in the dailies with the text I prefer I think the Japanese text for the quotes because I don't really care about the quotes maybe I'll change my mind of that as I go through and I'm looking at the quotes but visually I think I prefer the, the Japanese on the quotes but everything else I do really love um, it's there is sort of a pared down clean look um, to the English version that I am really happy with but you know, this is not you know a side by side comparison. There are videos that are out there that are comparisons between the English and the Japanese. I actually really like the um, again just the overall. I I taped these in, so um, they generally give you like this is December and January of 2000 December and then January of 2024, and then it starts the weeks. I, because I like to start on the 21st of December, that week of the winter solstice is my beginning of the year. I do my year ahead readings and things. And so I just um, printed on sticker paper and put a week's in so that I could start there. And then I still have December uh, and all that. Um, but I will say it's even like in there, um, like that just is nice and clean and bold. Um, so I'm really did do like the English version other than maybe the daily pages, but otherwise I do like the looks of it. So I've put that in already so that I can do uh, start prepping for there. I've got some sticky notes for different things. I've got a note to myself. I'm going to be doing Mondays with the weather. I need to print some of those out so that they're ready to go. Um, I kind of went through my monthly of where I'm going to put things. Um, this was not my idea. Um, I watched somebody called Plan to Create. She and she talked about kind of setting hers out, um, you know, just getting an idea so that when you future plan, you can kind of stick it in the right, the same place all the time. So that if I came back and ended up being gone at the cabin, I, I would have a space to put that there. So I kind of did that. I thought that was helpful. So I kind of, you know, again, went over what was working for me, what was not working for me, what I was going to carry into. Um, there is uh, at the beginning, which I'll be doing the same thing this year. There are two pages here, um, turning the new year. I used this last year to do my uh, all my wheel of the year stuff and I loved that I referred back to this I love the look of you know it's just pretty um, it has all the information I need I'm going to do the same thing uh, this year um, in that spot so that I'm going to do the same I don't know if I will be doing this uh, ahead of time like I went through and stickered all of my cards of the year cards of the month um I did sometimes use that to kind of go back and talk, you know, write in about at the at the end of the month, I would come back and sort of write, how did this card of the year uh, uh, impact me? How did my card of the month impact me or focus me in? Um, so and then I also had my runes of the season. Um, I don't think I'll do it ahead the whole year like I did. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sold because I didn't always come back to that. I'm trying to find, uh, uh, well, I don't know why I'm not using the size where it shows us where February is. I don't know. I liked that on one. I didn't use these at all for reading books, although I like that idea still. I don't know. I, I did like this, so I might just get it all printed out, but maybe do it each month because I found myself just going to the next thing and not sort of taking the time to think about, oh, my card has switched. And I think that if I had to come in when, and, you know, when I was done and was going into the next month, I pull out the stickers and put them in. It's going to force me to look at them and say, okay this is you know i'm shifting over this is my new energy i'm shifting so i think i'll print everything and put it in my 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 pockets but i think i'll put it in month by month i think that's my my way the best way to do it but i came back to this and i had a tab on it it's just since fallen off i think i'll put more of a permanent tab i came back to this all the time and really enjoyed this so i'll be doing that uh again next year 
uh, for next year. I'll, I'll do, I do my Wheel of the Year and Year Ahead readings on uh, this, the winter solstice. So uh, when I do that, I, then I decorate it. It, it was really fun last year. So I'll be doing the same thing this year and then doing the weekly weather tracking is how I'm going to start. I love the colors on the side. No, not everybody does, but I really love the colors. So really for my future planning, what I have to do to prep, um, I got things together. So, um, Number one, I sat down because I use this year at a glance this way, I use for my classes. So this is my class schedule for 2022. So I used the 2023 in pencil to go through and plan out and map out my class list for 2023. So that will get put into here because I need to, you know, put out an email about the classes and what classes are when. So I will go through and now that I've done it in pencil, I'll go through and do that. But you can just see like with the, the Japanese and the Japanese months, um, I really do like the English here. Um, so I'm, I am glad that I ended up um, getting that. So that's something that I will prep and I've done sort of my prep work by going through and figuring out my class schedule, um, which is actually, this isn't the order, but like, you know, I'm gonna do three uh, walk in the woods because people have been enjoying those and I enjoy those. Um, that's where we read a book and then we also do something divinatory along with it or project based along with it. And we, uh, I'm gonna do Tarot and Lenormand a little bit differently. I'm gonna do sort of a refresh one, uh, refresh one, but I will uh, maybe uh, be five weeks instead of four and have it be a useful for people who already know Lenormand, are returning to Lenormand, and also um, have enough of a base for people who are new to Lenormand. So, and same thing with tarot. Um, I, I'm gonna try that because I wanted to do a couple more walks in the woods. Uh, I am gonna be doing geomancy this year. I'm gonna do, be doing playing cards this year. I think I'm doing another Oracle, working with Oracle class. I don't know, There's not, they're not all on here because that's just where I started. But I've done the prep work is my point. Now I just need to put it into here. But the most of my prep work, it goes into the monthlies, right? Because this is all future planning. So um, that's where I'm doing a lot of it. And so what I do here, and I think I did a, did I put it in? here no that this has december i think i was kind of writing out one just i think in in the one i wasn't going to use this year november december uh, yeah january i was kind of starting to play with it where i liked how i did last year I put in red in these bars. I put astrological things. Um, I also, um, so I liked that. That worked, I wanna keep that. I'm not doing bills in it because those are reoccurring same bills every single month. I have that in Notion. So I just sit down and put those in for the week, which is where I really need them because otherwise I'm constantly looking at that for that. So I'm not gonna put those in there. Um, birthdays, I, I kind of played around with color coding because I have regular birthdays. I have lament days, which are people's passing. Like, so if I have friends who've lost a mother, I like to note that so I can light a candle for them. Um, and then this year I also put in, this is another pen that I didn't have to show. Um, this is one of my favorite pens and has been for a couple years, more than a couple years. This is the Coletto, the Pilot Coletto. Um, and you can get different sizes. This one has five in it, three, four, five. And I have a black one also that has uh, four in it. And um, I, you can get different colors. And then you can get sets of these refills and they're gel pens, which I love. And they don't smear. Um, even on the, uh, the Tomo River paper. Um, so I can, testing, now I say this and it's probably gonna smear. It doesn't smear right after you write it. So um, I love, love, love this pen. If you want a multicolor pen, get the Coletto. It's fantastic. And then you can just get whatever color. So I put the colors I wanted here. I put black in here, obviously for just black text. 
um, I ended up deciding to do um, green for birthdays, uh, a dark blue for lament days, and then I'm doing purple for um, what I ended up am doing this year. Let's go over here. Which I, you know, you if you know me, you know I do a lot of uh, ancestor work, and so um, I printed out my ancestry chart uh, thing. Um, obviously, one page just fits. I think if I went here. There's probably a way to get another, but I have very clear uh, information for uh, four generations. So parents, grandparents, great grandparents, great great grandparents. But I do have another one from here. So I may go back and do that also, but I wanted to do it first for, with this. And I have almost all, there's a couple women, you know, women's records aren't kept as well. So I have a couple women that I know the month and I know the year, but I don't have the date. But I think it's only two that I don't have. So I went in, well, what I did first is I printed out this and I will put a link to this, um, but I just printed out a half letter sheet to be able to, uh, and it just has each of the months. And so on the top half, obviously I don't want to show everybody in my family's birth dates and things, but I just on the top half put in um, birthdays and then I separated off and if they were lament days, I listed those with who they were, like my friend Kristen's parents both died in the same month, so I have their names plus her name under it, so if I, for whatever reason, I need to remember who that is. So I, I put that in there, and then my grandparents that passed away, my son who passed away, those my aunt who passed away. But then on the second half here, sorry, I'm really trying not to, to show too, too much of other people's personal information, but on the second half here, I listed my grandparents and uh, great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents and their date of birth. If it was a woman, I put their maiden name and their um, their uh, married name, so I kn knew who they were for sure. And then, um, and th if it was a maternal or a paternal uh, uh, side of my family. And so I could do lament days too, but I had, I thought because I have this many, I do know so many of my, my grandparents' um, birth dates that I thought it might get a little bit overwhelming. So right now I'm just celebrating their birth and this is just for honoring, right? Um, ancestor work is a lot of things, but it's not just about like getting guidance from your ancestors. It's about honoring and saying the names of your ancestors out loud, I think is so important. And so this means at least one, you know, one, uh, one day of the year, I will, you know, just be able to light a candle for them, say their name, say any memories that I, family stories that have been handed down on them um, and just be able to honor, make sure that I'm taking that time to honor them. So I sat down and prepped that. I did all my birthdays. I have a big family, friends birthdays, um, my, uh, again, and then, and then my ancestors are, are in there as well. Um, I also have this printout. I'll just put a link to uh, some printouts, but um, I, for the half letter, and I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to do mine twice because I did really like this because I'm just going to put it into, um, I'm going to put it into, I've got stuff everywhere now, I don't know where I stuck it, but I'm going to put it into here at the front of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Um, so that I have, you know, quick access to that. And it is part of divination and magic and tracking because what I did with this is I have the blank page to be able to decorate it. I'll just print out two sets of stickers and decorate them both similarly. Um, and then I have all of them listed out here. My years, my, this is from last year. I do a year ahead um, with tarot and then I do generally do a runic um, year, a wheel of the year. I think this year I'm gonna do, cause I work with runes all the time. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull a rune of the year for sure I'm doing that. But I think for the seasonal, I'm gonna do a grandmother. I'm gonna use the Weaver's Oracle and do a grand season with a grandmother, a whole season with a grandmother. I think that's what I'm going to do. I have hundred percent solidify that. Sometimes I've done animals. I'm tempted by that one as well, but I'm always kind of pulling from animal decks and working with them. So I, I don't know, right this moment, I'm leaning towards doing a grand seasonal grandmother. But anyways, that information will go here. 
And then this is for checking in. So the, a week before each of the turnings of the wheel, I do a sort of check-in, energetic check-in. And so I want to have a space where I can you know, after that is all congruent, what is a, you know, a sentence or two that I took away from that. And so I want, uh, I'll be doing the same thing this year. So that, um, that's that. So I have one printed out so that that's ready to go. Um, I am definitely doing this again. Uh, last year, a lot of the months, not all of them, you know, at, at every single day. Uh, I did do like, here's where I did it with my journey tokens. But a, a lot of the time, um, I did a rune of the day and just worked through them in order through the runes. And I just, it was a really great experience for me um, because runes are something I work with, not just divination, but... <coughs> excuse me, intention setting, magic working, things like that. And so keeping that alive and well, I might even do, uh, I do one similar for OMS and maybe alternate those. Um, but, um, but I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to start with runes. So I went ahead, I've got my uh, printed um, out for, for the next, for the first 33, because it's the Anglo-Saxon. So the first 33 days. So I have that ready. I've got my birth dates, lament days, ancestor birth dates, my, I'm ready for my wheel of the year. And then the big piece of work that I have to do to get ready is um, ast astrological. So I, um, for years before my friend Patrick made these, you can go to livingwheel.com, but before he made um, these gorgeous calendars, he made them for him and I um, as well. So I've been using these for so long, um, but this year I love Love how this is year is very different than his other ones but he puts um for the month the main sort of astrological things month by month and so or, or really it's season by season but he has the months here and this year he put the times as well so that's what goes into so i do all of that out for the whole year so i've just got this so i can put my you know, grant ancestors, birthdays, lament days, astrological, and then just a plain black one. So everything I need in here, and it doesn't smear. You can also do, um, this is a Hobonichi pen, which this ink also doesn't smear. And you can order refills for this. And I went ahead and did that because Patrick had told me you could get the refills because the one that comes with it in black is a me, to me a little bit too thin. Um, the 0.7 is perfection. So I have the original one, which feels like a 0.38 is what that feels like. And then I have the 0.7 in the blue position. And then I just left the red in here. Um, I think Patrick got the 1.0 uh, for the black as well. This ink is amazing, again, because it doesn't smear when you're going in and you're going to turn the page and do the next one. That's really good, and it writes really fantastic, but this lets me have all my colors, and it doesn't smear, and I love the way it writes. So I'm just going to use my Coletta. So then what I'll do is I'll go in. Now, this starts... Um, December 2022 so you have to be careful of that right that you're not um, doing that but this is December 22 which I am putting in because I'll be switching into this um, the um, this week um, there so I'm just going to go ahead and fill it out completely so I've got astrology I've got uh, ancestors lament days and birthdays that will be put in here and I will go through this whole year and do this ahead of time the other thing that I do do is I go in and I will put um, but I usually do that the month I'm doing it I do note my work my class days because obviously if I'm scheduling things I need to be aware of what days are class days and what days I have off and if I have workshops although those are usually planned throughout the week but um, I will um, go back in and uh, set those those are always on Saturdays and I've had that at the top where I will just highlight that in brown and put what class it is um, so that will go in there as well and then then it's just ready to go and everything else is future planning if an appointment comes up D, &D dates all that kind of stuff just kind of goes as we go but for prepping work um, in terms of sitting down and prepping 
Um, there'll be a little bit here putting in my class. There'll be a little bit here setting up what I'm going to be doing there, I think, just to get my head straight. Um, they will be going through, I'll be doing that in the next couple weeks is getting this all filled out. Um, I'm ready to go for this, but that won't be till the 21st. And I'm ready to go with my stickers. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty well set to just start uh, filling in the rest of the months and let the games begin in 2023. So I hope that this was interesting, um, just to see sort of a wrap up of what I liked, uh, what I did with my planner this year, what I liked, the uh, things that I used all the time, and then sort of how I go about getting ready to set up for uh, the calendar, my planner for the next year. Um, but it was, it's been a wonderful, I've spent a lot of time this year, not every single week, but a lot of weeks, you know, doing plan with me's with people. Um, hanging out and chit chatting while I um, decorated my planner and it was it's been a lot of fun so I appreciate everyone who hung out with me either during it or or um, later uh, when they had time to do so and I hope that you put in the comments below I would love to hear what um, what planner are you using? Were you happy with your planner last year? If you want to share anything like that, if you have, you know, I love this particular planner, put it in the comments below because that way, if people are coming here looking at planner stuff, they've got those suggestions as well. Okay, I'll talk to you all later.